and welcome back to yet another episode of Meet the Polymaker. I'm your host, Nikor, whether you like it or not. And behind the scenes, again, is Disturbed Medic pushing those buttons for me. So today is episode number four or five. I've lost track already, and we're barely into this thing. So uh, I'm being told five. So, um, But for today's show, we have scoured the internet uh, for different applications of 3D printing um, as far as, you know, across the world, but from useful to fashionable. Um, we're also gonna be uh, talking about some sneak peeks of hardware that's coming out soon, um, some announcements that are coming, um, and then also some great deals for those of you that use a whole lot of filament. Um, so with that said, this is Meet the Polymaker. Let's get right into it. So to start the news, uh, we're gonna take a look at a practical, uh, useful print done by actually the US Coast Guard. Um, so when looking for these uh, these headlines, I look for things of you know fun stuff, goofy stuff, and, and cool things. Um, with this, the Coast Guard actually has um, implemented, of course, 3D printing as, as most people have um, into their day-to-day -day operations. Um, you know, in the picture, you can't really see there's um, what we're gonna talk about mostly, they did some handles for a uh, wide gate, which is a, a water line for their fire suppression on the US CSG uh, Venturis, uh, one of their ships. Um, it, they needed handles, they couldn't get them, so they 3D printed them um, to, to solve that need. Um, reading through everything, looks like uh, they actually, for anything that they print, they do a three-phase setup. Um, and what they do is uh, how to decide on what to print. Um, and those three steps is triage, development, and then deployment. Um, so they've got a whole technical way of deciding what they're gonna print. You know, you and I, we, we print whatever we see on Maker World, printables, whatever. Um, but they, of course, have a little bit more uh, technical aspect to it. But just again, cool to see just anybody and everybody making things practical for things they need repaired on the go. Fire suppression is kind of important on a ship, so luckily they can get that fixed with just a printer on board. So next up, we're gonna travel to London for their fashion week, um, where an artist uh, by the name of Nicola Formchetti, might've killed that uh, pronunciation, but uh, uh, he showcased uh, some mixed reality 3D printed art and AI clothes. Um, Again, this is during the, the London uh, Fashion Week. Um, various works were displayed in digital form, physical form, um, and reading through, it looks like we, you've probably seen some of his work um, being worn by people such as Beyonce, Bjork, Carol G. So a lot of celebrities have already been wearing some 3D printed art or 3D printed clothing. Um, we probably have been unaware. Looking at some of the pictures like, uh, like you see here displayed, it's hard to tell. If you, if you looked at that, you're not gonna say that's 3D printed art, you're not gonna think of that as the first uh, first thing. So again, very cool to see uh, in the fashion industry. Um, I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more things. Of course, we've seen like the chain mail um, and uh, the NASA, uh, I think the hex mail or whatever they call it. Um, so lots of applications can be used. Um, it's gonna be cool to see, not just what the you know famous designers are doing, but what you, uh, you the maker and you the community are making. The next up, excuse me, uh, we're gonna talk about some upcoming hardware. So a couple companies here, uh, we got Creality and Sovel. Um, Creality is coming up on their 10th anniversary and on April 9th, they are doing an announcement where they're actually gonna be announcing a, a handful of things. What we know of is there's gonna be an FDM printer, a resin printer and a 3D scanner. Um, of course, they've been in uh, those markets for, for a while now. We, we've seen you know releases yearly, maybe sometimes sooner. Um, of course, they have, I think, 100 variations to enter three. Um, so waiting to see what we see out of this. Will we possibly see something with multicolor? I don't know. Hopefully so, or maybe uh, some snippets, at least a, a heads up of uh, when it might come. Um, with Sobel, um, they're, of course, they've announced their SV08. Um, I haven't uh, looked at a lot of information on it. They have a teaser pick on their website right now that you see. Um, 4XY, obviously, you know, they're probably gonna look to outdo their SV07, which was a really solid platform. Um, made popular, I mean, you know, many iterations back of kind of being the Prusa clone. But again, just great printers. I, I've owned a couple of them and they've been great. So looking forward to see what they come out there uh, with what we assume is a high speed, high quality printer. And we don't have a date for that yet. So uh, we'll stay tuned. Next up, the A1 fix is here. Bamboo Labs has announced the A1 fix uh, with their flex cable uh, for their bed has been developed. It's been started, actually started shipping uh, recently um, on their Twitter uh, X page. They actually displayed the uh, the cable that they they updated uh, from old to new. Um, has a lot more uh, 
tension um, to help with that flex so it doesn't break, doesn't short, um, tighter winding on the wiring, so just overall higher quality. Um, for those of you that are looking to replace that wire yourself, um, or I think it comes as a whole bed assembly, um, make sure you start a ticket. A support ticket is what gets you in that queue uh, for getting one sent out. Um, again, if you, uh, if you haven't read, if you replace the bed yourself to fix your uh, A1, um, you're actually gonna get, I believe, $120, uh, or no, I think it's an $80 voucher, excuse me. $80 voucher um, for replacing it yourself. You'll get the part plus a voucher for uh, Bamboo's uh, store. Um, you can opt to have it re uh, refunded and use that money to buy a, uh, buy a replacement. And correct, actually, I think it might be 120 credit and an $80 credit if you do a refund um, towards the purchase of a new printer. Um, but all that information is on Bamboo's website. Um, information on the cable, if you wanna look, uh, look at and check it out, that is on their Twitter. Um, so again, make sure to start that support ticket if you got one, uh, if you're wanting to replace that uh, yourself. So other than that, next up, uh, are you going through a lot of filament? Uh, I know I go through a lot, especially with Rocky Mountain coming up, um, but by a lot, I mean a lot. Uh, if you are a wholesale type customer, um, the wholesale site for Polymaker has weekly deals. You get up to 50% off on filament. Um, now the drawback there is, like I said, you got to you got to print a lot. Um, it is a minimum order quantity of 100 spools. Um, but if you're going to be using it, or especially whether you're starting a business, or you're you know craft season, you know vendor season, flea markets, all that are going to be starting up soon, and you want to be prepared, you know that investment's going to be nice because, like I said, you get 50 percent off, even though you have to order a lot. It's a a very good deal. So um, head over to wholesale.polymaker.com uh, for those. Uh, and you'll see actually uh, the page, it'll have the weekly deals, shows what qualifies for those discounts. And last but not least, you guys have heard about the TD1. We've talked about it a couple of times, had this creator Ajax on the show before. Um, that has got a firm release. We've kept kind of teasing, it's coming soon, coming soon. Um, it is releasing tomorrow. Um, so there are several websites that it's gonna be released on. Um, I don't have the details of you know, what deals everybody's doing. Um, MSRP, I think is $80 across the board for the fully printed, ready to use uh, uh, machine with a uh, USB cable, everything in it. Um, but specifically for Polymaker, uh, um, on polymaker.com's website, there will be a header, you're gonna see it, where the deal is, is you buy 10 spools of filament, and it's gonna be certain families, the Poly Light and the Poly Terra family. Um, you get 10 spools of filament on your order, and then you'll add the TD1, which actually the TD1 comes with a spool of natural TD20 uh, measured uh, filament, PLA filament, um, you'll get the TD1 and that natural, you'll add it to your cart, and then that will actually be $0. Now that's gonna start at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. If you're wanting it, it is limited down to 100 units. The first 100 units processed will be who get them. Um, it may let you add it if the site doesn't catch up to itself um, on, your, uh, on your order, but again, the first 100 that come through there, it's getting manually processed. It'll be shipped separate from your uh, order and your spools will still come from Amazon or shipped from Amazon. Um, but the uh, the TD ones will be shipped, uh, shipped separate. So again, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, Polymaker, well, us.polymaker.com. Um, the information will be on there and, and it'll list the families or the uh, the family of filaments that qualify for those orders. So just watch, keep your eyes peeled for that and be ready to click because uh, I have a feeling they're going to sell out. And this is also, these are printed in the, very limited edition made specifically for this project, um, ABS, Starlight, Neptune. So I I have one, I built one, um, not the Neptune. Um, I'll be ordering one because who doesn't like a collectible? Um, but with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get right into the print show offs. So the first print here was actually a print number five we were gonna share last week and somebody, not this guy, may have missed it and skipped right past it. So the, uh, you know, the producer was quick on his fingers to skip past, you may have saw the picture, you didn't hear any mention. So I do apologize to Ricky Lee Tanner. Um, this is actually his model created by him and printed by him it is the VSV or variable support vehicle. Um, currently not available for download anywhere. Um, watch the show offs because I'm sure he'll link it probably in a thread under his uh, show off print um, that you see here. Um, so just a really cool print. I'm sure there's gonna be more. I've seen a lot of vehicles lately uh, and things like this. So it's gonna be cool to see what comes out next. Uh, next up, this may be familiar to some. Uh, you've seen them at the, uh, the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap. You've seen them at the East Coast Rep Rap Festival. 
Um, it's been to other events. Um, this guy has traveled the world. This is the Polymaker Scientist. Um, it's their model to kind of showcase uh, their their filament, their colors. Um, the Polymaker Scientist display has grown immensely <laughs> from the first time it being displayed was Rocky Mountain uh, Rep Rap last year. Um, and I don't remember the exact numbers. I want to say 200 some, maybe high 200s of how many were displayed. Um, you know, that was even larger than for the East Coast Rep Rap. And this, uh, this year, it's going to have a total of 402 columns and roughly around 390 or so, maybe 400 scientists on display. Um, and it's, it's awesome to see. It's one thing to see it in pictures. It's awesome to see in person. Uh, this was designed by Kong, um, and it's been uh, different variations. It's been uh, adjusted. We've adjusted it uh, this year, new for the display to help things straighten up and uh, make everything look the same way. Um, but this was also, this was printed by Computer Medic, one of our community members, uh, maxed out on his XL, his Prusa XL. So um, I don't know the exact, I think maybe a 300 or 400% scale, um, but large. And if you guys come out to Rocky Mountain, there's a, a good possibility you're going to see it there. Next up is a functional print. Um, always love to see these. Like I said, just like we talked about the Coast Guard earlier, is finding ways to fix things or improve things through functional prints, whether it be just an adapter or just an entire functioning tool. Um, this here is a pipe base, uh, pipe vice jaws and <laughs> tongue twister uh, created by D3D. Uh, and this was printed by uh, Kuki PM. Um, and this is available on printables. Um, I didn't mention also the scientist is also available on printables uh, for download if you want to print it yourself. Next up, we're going to look at a Beat Saber block. For those that don't know, Beat Saber is a very popular VR game. Um, it's a rhythm game. They use lightsabers to slice through these blocks. Those blocks, you'll see the arrow kind of on here, the triangle. You have to slice those blocks in that direction. It is a fun game. It's a, it's a good rhythm game um, for people that are out of shape like myself. Um, it'll get you winded after about two songs. So <laughs> try at your own risk. Uh, but this is a, actually a desktop decor. Um, it was designed and uh, printed by Devious Cat and is also available on printables. Last but not least, uh, another community member, uh, actually uh, Ashko, this is her lion. This is a Hue Forge lion she created in the Hue Forge program um, and also, of course, then printed. Um, it is available on Maker World. Uh, just search Ashko's lions um, and you can print this yourself. This, uh, we've talked before, this is a multi-color print, but it is not required for any special, uh, special device or printer. Ender 3 can do it. It is just strictly a layer swap. Um, so you can change up the colors. I, I think Ash did a couple different variations of this. Um, there's a red one. There's a blue one. I think listed on the uh, the page. Uh, you can choose whatever color you want. Get different designs, different depth to it. Um, but again, very very cool print. Appreciate uh, everybody that showed off their prints uh, for this week. Um, always go to the show off uh, prints and Discord. Share your prints, whether it be your own creation or just a print that you love, and you could be showcased on the next show. Um, that is it for our show print show off. Uh, we will be right back with our guest right after these messages. Whoa, I'd love to get into 3D printing, but I live here on the sun where the UV rays are nuts. Wait just one moment there, strapping young chap. Have you ever heard of Polymaker ASA? Polymaker ASA is UV resistant, so it is the perfect application for printing near or around the sun. No way, bro. Yes way, brosif. Here, try it out. Radical, man. If you need a weather-resistant material, make sure you check out Polymaker's ASA. Printing on the sun is no problem at all with Polymaker ASA. Are you into cosplay and prop making? Are you tired of having to break out those power tools to sand those lines away? And don't forget about all that hand sanding. Cramps. Ouch. Introducing Polymaker's Cos PLA. Available in two different versions, version A and version B. Both versions are still easier to sand than standard PLA. Find out more at us.polymaker.com. Has this ever happened to you? Have you just been minding your own business and you drop your PLA print? There's gotta be a better way. Well, now there is. With our Polylite PLA Pro, you won't have to worry about dropping your PLA prints ever again. Just look how these tests held up to our drop test, the same one that we did with PLA. 
If you need even more impact resistance, make sure you check out our Polymax PLA. This hammer is no match for Polymax PLA. This is Polymax PLA, the toughest PLA in the world. And today we're gonna put that to the test. I printed this very mechanical model and we're gonna drop it from the 12th floor. You heard me well, the 12th floor. Let's go. Ready for the first drop in three, two, one. Whoa, that's crazy. Not even a scratch. Let's go and check it closer. Not even a single scratch. I dropped it again from the 12th floor and still not a single scratch. Buy your Polymax PLA right now. Performance may vary depending on users, individual factors, and external condition. Individual results may vary, not a guarantee of specific outcome. Consult your professional before you see website for details and limitations. Use responsibly. And welcome back to Meet the Polymaker. We are here to meet our next guest, which we mentioned a little bit earlier for the creator of The Scientist. Please welcome in Kong. Um, almost. There we go. Now you're there live. <laughs> hey, how you doing? My name's Kong hey, Cho. Not, hey, not too bad. Thank you for uh, for coming, giving us uh, some of your time to tell us to meet you, to, to see what you're up to and what you do. Yeah, more than happy to be here. Yeah. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and, and what do you do? Uh, well, most notably, I guess I'm more well known uh, for my designs. Um, when uh, I did I did work for someone named 3D Print General, if you guys know who that is. <laughs> I've heard of him. We had somebody uh, similar to him. Uh, I've talked to him, like, I think, yesterday. So yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Small world. Crazy. <laughs> uh, so I did designs for him. Uh, I've also done designs... Uh, online you may have seen some of them particularly the the polymaker scientist i've seen so, one i've uh, seen one or two of them i think yeah <laughs> currently i'm a high school teacher um awesome but i'm transitioning into a different role soon so uh maybe that's something we can talk about later on in the show uh, oh, my sure. back yeah my background's in game design stuff so modeling creating these characters and stuff like that is just what i love doing anyway so uh yeah hopefully i can make it into a big career no, that, that's awesome. Now, so yeah, you say you're a teacher now. Is that what you originally went to school for? Is it kind of something you fell into? Is it that you, what do you teach, actually, I guess, is what I should ask first. What, the, oh. Do you teach a certain grade or a certain class? Yeah, so uh, I teach animation and game design at Coronado High School. Awesome. So and now is that something that you went, uh, that's what you wanted to go to school for and, and become? Or is it something you kind of transitioned to with just with your skill? <laughs> No way, man. I, I literally fell into it. You know, okay. uh, a buddy of mine was uh, was teaching there as a placeholder because they didn't have an animation teacher at the time. And he, he was moving. So it's like, hey, Kong, you want to just take over? I'm like, uh, sure. And then I got my I got my uh, probate. What's it called? Uh, something credential. And then uh, okay. they threw me into a classroom. <laughs> so what were you doing before that? Were you doing uh, like game design or was it just kind of in uh freelance design or what were you doing before you got pulled into that? Um, so actually before all that, I worked for some 3D printing companies, um, okay. notably uh, SD3D and then Incept3D. Um, Sean knows about that one because I took his job. <laughs> Back did you 20... push him out or was, did he leave and you just took over afterwards? Uh, there I... there? <laughs> no, no, there's no grudge. We've been friends since, but um. Uh, we worked at SD3D together. He was there before me. He actually knew the owners. And um, uh, something happened, and he transitioned out of it. And, uh, he could probably tell you the details. And then they made me take his position. So there you go. Uh, so it all worked out then. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just fell into it. Everything I just I just fell into everything. There you go. Now, so, of course, with the, the modeling, uh, you said you did, like, game design uh, is what you were going for. You started out modeling. Did you start with 3D printing like during that same time, or was that something you transitioned into after you were modeling a few times and then decided, hey, I want to see a physical form of it? Yeah, I actually uh, I started learning how to model in high school. So back in like 2007, 2008 is when I started learning. And then when I got to college is when I saw the first 3D print. Do um, you, you know Shapeways? I've heard of them, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so back in the day, they did SLS printing 
um, for consumers. Right. You can go to the website, order some prints, very early stuff. And I saw someone bring in their, their model. I'm like, I want to do that. And that's what got me started back in 2010, 2011. And I'm like, I got to get my models into the real world. I'll do whatever it takes. Oh, yeah. And that jump started it. So now, uh, do you remember what, like, cause did you start first with submitting a model to them to print or did you, was your first model one that you printed yourself? No, this is before desktop printers were a thing. Uh, cause right. it wasn't, was it what, 2015, 2016 when MakerBot was really getting big. So still a little bit uh, expensive to get into too. I, and I, and I printed in metal cause I was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, That's even more pricey. Now, now what was your, the, from your own design, what was your first ever printed uh, model? It was actually a Keyblade that I made. Hear me out. I made this in Google SketchUp. Okay. <laughs> Not bad, but how how'd it come out? Did it come out satisfactory? Yeah, I still have it. It, it, was, it was printed in steel. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, so that's it's gonna be one of those like uh, family heirlooms you just pass down because it's not gonna wither away. Oh yeah. Oh, video froze. I think my video feed froze. Nope. Um, real quick, uh, hold on, chat. Uh, James, is he frozen through the stream? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, he's not frozen on my end. So let Ooh. me. Do you want to try refreshing his screen real quick, James? Stand by for just a moment, guys. Having a little bit of technical difficulties. <laughs> People have used SketchUp before. Yeah, it's uh, not the greatest. <laughs> yeah. Very base, rudimentary. No, it's just bad. <laughs> would... okay, and, uh, chat, can you hear Kong currently? Have you been able to hear him this, uh, this time? I know he's frozen on the video, but can you hear him? Audio is fine. Okay. Um, Kong, can you do me a favor? Can you try disconnecting and reconnecting with the link? Sure thing. I'll do Thank it right you very now. much. Thanks, everybody, for your patience. <laughs> These shows can, you know, have, have their own little quirks about them. You know, things happen. But let's see here. He's live on mine, and we are cool. Yep, we are back. Thank you very much, Kong. So, uh, yeah, so where we left off, of course, you did uh, the Keyblade. You said that in metal. Um you know now so uh, once what was the first model you ever was that you didn't print that yourself right or did you have a metal printer did you have access to no i went to do shapeway so up okay, so until you okay. exactly yeah. up until 2016 i was printing only in shapeway okay now did you uh, did you do that just for of course the keyblade for your personal uh, uh use did you do things that you resold or did you have a purpose for them or were you just wanting to see your own models and getting them made to, to keep them for yourself yeah, that was it. I just wanted to uh, make something for me um, because there were things that I, I made and I just wanted to have them because I uh, it was way either too expensive to buy it myself or I wanted to personalize it a certain way or whatever it was. Um, eventually, that did drive me, though, to want to make toys and want to make figures and designs and sell. But prior to that, it was just for fun. Oh, yeah. But a good stepping stone. You know, we got you into it. Um... Now, when, uh, do you remember when you bought your first printer and, and what it was? <laughs> uh, it was an Ender 3. Uh, Same. <laughs> everyone's first printer, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I used a bunch of printers before that, but it was the first printer I bought for myself with my own money. Okay. Uh, uh, because I've used Stratasys, I've used, you know, MakerBots, LulzBots, um, all, all kinds of machines, you know, Prusas, but I never owned one until that point. Now, with you being the teacher, I know you said it's animation and everything. Um, do they allow like that implementation of 3D printing for that whole purpose, too, to allow the students to print their models? Or do they have, like, a separate section for that in the school? Oh, I, I pushed for it hard. Awesome. You know, like, uh, there was no 3D printing. Like, they were using Ultimakers. And that would, there weren't even, the rods were rusted. They didn't use them. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I, I pushed for the 3D printers. I pushed for X1s. Um, you know, better realities, not the cheapy Ender 3s, you know? So oh, yeah. right now the robotics class, which I, I'm, I'm a mentor of, they have an X1. And there you go. Now, if, if they ever need sponsorship, I know a company that, that that loves to sponsor robotics teams, just as a heads up, if they're oh, really? already not. I'll get with you on that later. <laughs> All right, right. So then, uh, of course, we, we know how you got started and everything, but um, we, we talked about the scientists. Now, of course, you're the creator of the model. Was that something that was the original 
your design or was it something that you took from an image that was given to you? Uh, if I recall, I think I, uh, I did a sketch for uh, Nicholas. Okay. And, and then he said, yeah, this looks great. Let's go and move forward with this. And then um, I think that's how it went. And then I made a first version and that's what they ended up using. And um, um, I think it had some flaws just because um, th there were some, some caveats in the design that I wasn't, you know, really good at at that time, but I think I've gotten better now, so. Oh yeah, no, I've <laughs> I've been part of the team to print a lot of these. I think I have about a hundred uh, in my workshop right now for the, nice. the new display. And uh, yeah, no, it's each iteration. I of course printed the ones uh, previously and now we have the notch and we have some upgrades. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's improved. It's a great model. I don't know if you've had a chance to see, I, I actually remixed, I, I cut the head off your model and then enlarged it you know, hollowed it out, made it a whole helmet. So now it's actually, a, it was just a fun project that I started with that just ended up evolving into a cosplay that we do at the Rep Raps now. Yeah, I actually looked up the picture of it and I'm like, yeah. dude, that looks good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it came from a really good model. So, I mean, I can't take too much credit. <laughs> All I had to do was just scale it up and make it fit the printer and figure yeah, out how to hollow. print it properly. So, but no, but it's uh, awesome design. We appreciate that. Like I said, it's it's gonna be used throughout uh, so many displays. Um, there's now a whole set over in Europe. Um, we're printing a whole new set for us here in the U.S. Um, so it's it's been printed by many, and uh, I've got plenty of extras. So anybody going to the RepRap Festival uh, might be handing out some some freebies there because <laughs> there's a lot of extras from uh, from this project. Um, but uh, now with that, with the uh, scientists and everything, how did you get involved with Polymaker? Uh, how, how did that happen? I think it was actually through Sean. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, because, that's right. Because you worked with them on his uh, on his page. Yeah. His and so uh, Nicholas reached out uh, uh, because I have done designs for Sean, and um, he I think that uh, initially it was for something else, and then it ended up becoming the scientist, if I recall. Nicholas can correct me. He, he probably remembers better than me. Oh, yeah, I've been a, now, how long ago was that? You said uh, what, when did you create that model? Do you remember what year at least? It, I think it was during the pandemic. It was like 2021, 20, 2020, something like that. Okay. 2021, I think. There we so go. it's been a couple of years. Nope. Like I said, it's been, been a great model, so it'll it'll live long uh, for many, many more years to come. Um, now, are there any future designs uh, that you can talk about that you're uh, doing or uh, that you'd want to share? Oh, yeah, definitely. This, uh, so, okay, well, uh, you, do you mind if I go on a little rant here? Absolutely. No, no. This, this is your time. We, we wanted to learn more about you and what you do. So you talk whatever you want to talk about. Okay. So I think my second most well-known design, is set, aside from the Polymaker Scientist, is a cyberpunk Oni mask. Is that so, the, the half mask, right? Is that what yeah. that is? Yes. It was an ornate design. Yeah. I designed that, made it free, and people are just selling it. And I'm like, oh, man, they're not even crediting me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst part, yeah. Yeah, so you know it's 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 on Etsy when you type in Oni mask, it's like the second thing. I'm like, oh man, it's selling for like eighty bucks, and you can't take them down. They just open up two new shops, you know. So, oh, yeah. um, I'm gonna make a new Oni mask design. Um, I wish I could pull it up. But I can't. I can't share my screen or anything. Um, um if you, uh, I don't know if you have the same access. On, did you pull up this link through Streamlabs or through a web browser? Uh, through a browser. Um. Well, I think you're on your iPad, though, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That... Well, you have access to my Instagram page. It's actually, I posted the design on there. Oh, right, yeah. Let me, uh, here, I'll pull it up here. Let's yeah, so. Technical we can get here. I'm going to make it even better, and it's going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it either available to my Patreon only, or maybe through just only bought through me, but this is a new design I'm going to, I'm going to release. I wonder if I can bring it up. I'm taking I'm it to the... share. Let's see. I don't know if I can share how my screen share will work, but we shall see. Yeah. Look at my other the, the, the very, uh, the latest uh, sketch with the red yeah. mask. Yeah. So this uh, is, okay, this yeah. is it. The... Let's see if I can do this here. I really, uh, I, let's see if it shows up. Okay. Okay. So James is sharing the link in the chat. Yeah. Cause I don't know. Does my screen share do anything when I do that, James, or no? It probably gives you an extra. Okay. So we're figuring this out as we go, guys. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, yeah, guys. So, um, <laughs> yeah, if you guys follow that link, of course, it takes you to his Instagram. Uh, the very first, uh, the, the latest post, it's a red Oni mask, which looks amazing. And yeah, what I love to see is like that. So how you, you start with a 2D sketch, and then to see uh, how 
skilled you guys are with modeling things and turning it into something and then of course printing it that's a whole nother uh beast and yeah that's i'm very interested in, in following you for that one because the only master are awesome like i said you know there's uh i'm sure 90 percent of the ones i've seen across the internet were probably years now talking to you so <laughs> Well, it's a, the, I think it's the only Cyberpunk Oni mask. If you like go to Etsy, I think it's the only one that actually pops up when, when you type Cyberpunk. Okay, okay, so yeah, Cyberpunk Oni mask. So that especially to specify. Now you said too is uh, you might be releasing this uh, this new one on Patreon. Yeah, I, I'm thinking I want to do that uh, just so I can limit it being like you know taken and sold. Well, yeah, at least get something for your time and creation for sure. There, there's no no problem with that. Um, now, do you have a Patreon page set up that we can at least link? I know it's not available yet, but that way, if anybody's interested in the mask, we can uh, go to. Not yet. I'm still working on some things, and I don't want to be a shill right now. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> anything, I'm sure you'll probably update it on your Instagram. So, if you guys you, you see his Instagram, uh, follow him. Uh, obviously, he, he does amazing work, whether it be sketches or 3D modeling. Um, so, if you're interested in that mask, watch that. And, and like you said, it likely we'll plan on whether he does patreon or whatever uh, rowdy goes i'm sure he'll post there so definitely so, definitely make sure to follow him don't feel pressured to follow me it's optional yeah. <laughs> follow him or else <laughs> and then, and but yeah okay, that's... oh man there's so many versions of this <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah go down the rabbit hole and see him but but of course uh, you know kong's is the best version so just yeah make sure to support him it's <laughs> Give gonna him be credit if you print it um, and now if, uh, with the projects and everything that you're working on, um, has there been any planned future collabs with Polymaker or anything in the talks that, uh, or anything no, that you, you hope that, to do? Well, either I can't talk about it or I don't know yet, but I would love to do another big collab with them. Like, uh, I, I kind of want to make a new version of the scientist, like a little either action figure or maybe like a smaller statue or something that, uh, we fund for people to print. Now, do you do a lot of, I obviously do sketching, so I imagine you do like the, like 2D graphic design and stuff also? Uh, yeah, it's just, I actually went to school for that too. Um, so uh, graphic design, stuff like that. I'm an, I'm, I'm, I'm an illustrator first. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. So yeah, no, I say, I'll, I'll plant a seed here. The, the entire community has been asking for merchandise forever. So if you come up with some cool sketches that might look cool on a shirt, you know, maybe maybe I can pull some strings and we can get some stuff out there. But uh but always a possibility. I'm not promising chat anything, just so we're aware. I'm just, you know, again, plan the seed, getting some uh, feelers out there, if we can get some uh, cool designs going. All um, right. Now, now with that on, uh, like, modeling and everything, do you just model things that you, you, know, you want to do? Do you pick and choose, or do you do commissions? Uh, I, I don't really do commissions anymore. Um, not yet. Right now, um, to be honest, I'm focusing on trying to build my own kind of uh, Etsy shop, my own kind of like Patreon. Yeah. So um, almost, I want to try to start YouTube, just anything to kind of build my own kind of uh, brand. I guess that's the word people use. Uh, And I'm going to be quitting teaching. So I've been teaching for about three years and uh, I think I'm going to move on to try to do something on my own. Awesome. Well, I know a content creator that you may know also might be able to help you help you in that endeavor. Uh, Who would that be? Um, I, I don't think you'll find them on YouTube anymore. Yeah. I'm like 3D print something. I, it's it's a long story. <laughs> He's a... Uh, yeah, I got his number. There you, you go. Yeah, got on speed you. dial. There you go. Um, now, with the, all the models that you do create, um, with every model you create, do you always print a version of it? Or do you just sometimes model and just have it saved back in a folder for later? Or, or once you're finished, do you print it to see how it comes out? Yeah, I always try to print it first because I need to make sure that it's printable. Uh, because you know, you may come across issues, fitment stuff like that. Um, you can only do so much digital. Like uh, I have a I have a print right here, where I printed this out to make sure it fit, and then I I submit I uploaded this to my Patreon. Now, was that painted or was that printed? Is that a resin print or FDM? Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's resin. It's um right. it's a model of uh it's a shirtless version of um. David Martinez from Cyber, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Okay, right, yep. So the other, there's a jacketed version. This is the one to show off like the Tendeva stand on the back. Oh yeah, no, that's that, that detail is crazy. Yeah. Now, now, how long does it typically? You know, of course, the model it differs between that, but how much time do you typically take to, you know, create a model from start to finish? Uh, on average, um, if I'm counting the hours, like 10, 10 to fifty hours. 
Oh yeah, so definitely uh, now save like do you know how much time you spent on the that model you just shared? Uh this one I, I used the base mesh, so I'd say about uh maybe fifteen hours plus a couple of hours for tweaking. Awesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> I could uh, I could do a cube and a sphere in about ten hours. So <laughs> I give you props on that. The, the designs are crazy. Um now when you're printing is, is resin usually your go to or and I won't hold no. it against you if it is, but uh or FDM. Yeah, it's just it's it's messy, you know. So yeah, I post processing. Yeah, I don't mind resin, but the bamboos are so freaking good. Sorry, not to shill bamboo, but they're really good. And uh, I don't. I've even... talked about that company once or twice on the show, so I won't hold it against you. So, so with that said, I would assume your main printer that you use personally is bamboo. Yep, I, I got a P1P at the shop here. There's some P1Ss and X1. So we got a lot now, of is machines. That the, is that the shop at the school, or is this a shop that you work with or at? Yeah, so I'm actually working with a a, a buddy of mine, uh, Zero Three Seven Designs, and uh, I'm sharing the shop with him. I'm collaborating with certain things, um, and eventually, hopefully, I get to work here full time. But we don't know how it's going to go yet. Right now, I'm just we're just working together. So now, is he so? Is it a print farm company, or does he do modeling also, or is it kind of a mix? It's kind of a mix. It's a print farm. He does CAD stuff. Um, I'm more of organic, which is why we're collaborating. Um, he's a friend of mine. I worked with him since also at SP Three D, so. We, you know, I've known him a long time, uh, almost as long as Sean. Awesome. So we're uh, all just kind great. of friends. If you get along, I would say if you get along and be able to work with friends and especially at a successful business on something that you, uh, you, know, you have a passion for. That's, that's the key. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's the job everybody wants. So <laughs> congratulations on that. And hopefully it does go, go far for you. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. <laughs> yep. But we're going to oh, move to the community and we're going to see if the community has got any questions for you. So anybody in chat, do you have any questions for Kong? And there may have been some uh, James in my ear. Have you seen any come through? I didn't see anything posted. Ask those questions. Yes, ask those questions. Will ASA be restocked in Canada? <laughs> Let me ask Kong. So Kong, will ASA be restocked in Canada for Polymaker? So I can't speak for Polymaker, but my sources tell me I don't know. I would say oh. a, a high probability eventually. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. The the Maka, I think, 23, is asking Polymaker Scientist Bobblehead when? You know, we might swing for that. Let, let, me, let me talk to Nicholas and see what we can do there. <laughs> I say, yeah, that'd be a, a pretty, uh, well, I say quick edit, like I, I know how to model, but... <laughs> For somebody with your skill, probably not too bad at just chopping the head off, making it big, add some springs, and <laughs> call it a day. But oh. um, okay, so we're also asked, how long did it take you to model the scientist? Uh, well, the initial scientist was probably about like 20 hours of work, and then it was another 10 to 15 hours to fix it because I had to work off of an old file. Um, so right. not, so I had to like go back in and make changes on an existing file, which is harder uh, because there were already all these polygons in place and uh, parts that weren't connected that were connected and stuff like that. So with the bobblehead, I'd probably start fresh. There you go. Now, have you from the start of the, I know the scientist isn't your first model, but from the start of the scientist till now, uh, have you been using the same software or have you changed software multiple times on, on what your, you know, your preferred method is? Uh, I actually mix software based on what I need. So okay. um, like ZBrush is my main sculpting tool. But then Blender is when I want to get the hard surface. And then I use Fusion to make sure everything's the right size. Or if I want to make a hole or a cut or a peg, the exact size, I use Fusion. Um, so I mix and match the softwares. Like, you know, like uh, the base for the Polymaker, that was done in Fusion. And then I go into ZBrush to make the scientists and then bring them together. And so those all those applications work well together? I mean, they all basically use the same format. So you can take one out from the other and, and go through them? Or is it a process? Uh, yes and no. So, for example, uh, you, STL, 3MF files, um, natively, they're just, they're done. They're just polygons ready to go. But in ZBrush, I can work on them, sculpt on them, and then export them out as an STL. So, yeah, I need to do that, that conversion to STL so they, they can talk to each other. All right. And um, that's just something you learn along the way. Uh, was, there, was there hardship of doing all the transitions of using each software or... Did you learn them all at the same time or kind of bit by bit? Because I know each one kind of controls different, feels different. Uh, I actually started with neither of them. I started it up uh, in uh, in Maya. 
So okay. <laughs> I've heard of the animation software, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a little more complex, I think. Or, or you know, did yeah. I, was that doing the stuff in that? Was it did it make it an easier transition into an actual 3D modeling software, or was it complete apples and oranges? Uh, no, it's switching between software packages is annoying because you're used to shortcuts one way and then you, you go back yeah. in and now control Z doesn't undo anymore. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's jarring switching between software, but you get used to it. Yeah. I get that muscle memory down. Just kind of like playing video games. Certain ones have your keys and you know what, what does what? So I get confused on video games, let alone the 800 shortcuts in Photoshop modeling software, et cetera. So uh, I give you props there. Um, let's make sure there's no other questions in here. I think we answered what we got. And two. Okay, so that looks like all the community questions. Um, so we're gonna move on to uh, rapid fire. So these ones uh, are super hard questions. It's gonna get your brain going um, and hopefully you get the right answer. Um, so first off, the uh, easy one, what is your favorite modeling software? I know you said you use a lot, but what's, what's your go-to? Hands ZBrush. down, ZBrush. And now on ZBrush, I think I've seen before. Have you? Do they have a version of that in a VR, or is, that, uh, is it something else? A Google ZBrush or something? It's something like it's like ZBrush, but it's not ZBrush. ZBrush uses a totally different rendering engine, which is why it's okay. it's top tier. Awesome. That's that's the, that's what would now as a beginner is that what would you recommend for somebody that's looking to get into it, or is that kind of you can take baby steps up to that point? I, I would get Blender. It's free. Blender. It's got a sculpting mode. I would just go with Blender first. And if you like sculpting, go to ZBrush. There you go. Okay. Now, next up, what is your favorite Polymaker filament? Oh, uh, easy. Polymax PLA. There you go. Any certain color or just the, the material itself because it takes the, the impact? Uh, orange. The bright orange, that neon orange. I love it, man. It, I just, <laughs> when I print like hardcore stuff, it, it just, it's really noticeable. And I love it. Oh, yeah. It just pops for sure. Yeah. And that, that's a, great orange especially like i said the brightness of it um so um what design in your brain have you not modeled yet that you really want to do uh for 3d printing earthworm gym okay i i can get behind that i, I can do some earthworm gym back in the day so you know, that's 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 my style um now is that something you plan on doing or is it kind of you know when you get around to it or uh i, I got a face mesh so i just need to have time and just work on it because I got like 80 unfinished models in my catalog. And that's probably ever building too, isn't it? You know, you probably start yeah. more than you finish. <laughs> kind of. I have a I have a spawn 3D model that's like 99% done. And once I'm done with that, it's gonna be killer. Oh yeah, spawn. I love spawn. I used to have some awesome trading cards of that. So I'll I'll be watching your Instagram for sure. And then you know I had to follow that Patreon to get those models. Um so being a modeler yourself do you have a favorite designer or modeler that you follow or that you got inspiration from? For 3D right now is Raph Grissetti, Raphael Grissetti. Uh, he's the lead designer on God of War. Okay, yep. I've actually got a God of War statue over uh, over yonder on the other side of this room. So yeah, that, he is that good. So then, uh, is he involved with the video games themselves and everything? Yeah, he's the art director. He's the oh, he's the main art director. Okay, so yeah, he, oh. so a good guy to get inspiration from. Yeah, he 3D then, prints. He's a great. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. No, but it's, it's the delay kind of <laughs> kind of uh, negates things. But no, just uh, I'd say the last question we have. I may have been fed this question by a certain somebody. Do you do any good imp uh, impressions? And God if you dang do, it! <laughs> you know, I I, I can break <coughs> the ice here. I um, mean, hang out like I, I do. I'm not great. I I just do fun impressions. And, and my go-to is Christopher Walken. I love Christopher Walken. And you know, he has that just enunciation. So, you know, people love it and hang out. And I'm like, hello, I'm Christopher Walken. How you doing? So, That's pretty good. <laughs> for me, they've been it's, waiting uh, for that to be on the show. Trust me. <laughs> for, for me, it's Macho Man. I love doing Macho Man. Okay. Yep, that's what I heard. Oh, man. Can I get into it? I don't know if I can get into it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. No, psych yourself up. Let, let's get this. Let's, let's get it go. right. Oh, yeah, man. Nothing but nothing, man. Oh, yeah. I am the macho man. John Cena, but a little boy. And I am the man. Oh, yeah. The macho man. Or something awesome. like that. I no, almost that was, that was great. No, that was, uh, I, I felt it. I, I felt the uh, <laughs> the soul of it all. So, nope. Uh, I thank you very much for sharing that. That's uh, 
you know, not easy to do on a, on a live stream, but yeah, we, we broke the ice, we got through it, and I'm sure chat really appreciates it. Yeah, I see that was fantastic. <laughs> nice one, good one. So yeah, no, good, good props there. But um, with that, um, before we head out here, obviously we've linked your Instagram. Do you have any other socials or any other projects that you want to share, link, let the people know or where where else they might be able to find you if not just Instagram? Not yet, but hopefully soon I'll be all over the socials, especially on my Instagram, I'll update it. But I'm uh, my my new page is going to be called Code, Walk, uh, Code Talker Designs. So once I get that rolling with all the pages up and all the you know links going, I'll, I'll post the updates and people will be able to check it out. Awesome. And now with that too, did you say you're going to look into getting the content creation and do videos on uh, exactly. YouTube? Yeah. So once I get all, all of the names, you know, set up and all the sites, you know, all the, all that detailed stuff, then uh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna get the ball rolling. Well, uh, again, thank you for coming. We look forward to seeing what else you do, what else you might bring to the Polymaker lineup. Um, so thanks for stopping in and you have a good night. Thank you. Take care guys. See you later, Colin. Have fun. Uh, right oh, for sure. See you later. Okay, guys, that was Kong. So a lot of you probably have printed his models and not realized it. Um, I recently, even being involved uh, with Polymaker, how I have been, found out who the uh, who he was. That was the first time me meeting him. Awesome guy, uh, obviously super nice. Um, uh, we were linked through uh, the 3D Print General, or Sean, Polymaker Sean. Um, so thanks to go out to him. Um, so just. Fun guy, so we'll have to watch for those projects. Make sure if you guys are interested, follow that Instagram. It looks like he's gonna have a lot more stuff coming, so uh, stay tuned. But with that said, I forgot to mention last time, the giveaway. Make sure to enter the giveaway with I am awesome in chat. Again, space it, most of you know how to do it. You see everybody else doing it, copy them. I am awesome, all spaces. Um, get entered in for a free spool of Polymaker filament. Um, we'll do that drawing here in just a little bit. Um, so now is your last chance to put it in there because um, then we'll go right to the drawing. Um, but with that said, this is Meet the Polymaker. We are live every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we appreciate everybody that uh, shows up each and every week for that support. Um, there is a you know, new guest every episode. Uh, we're gonna you know, change it up uh, between different makers, uh, different areas of expertise. Um, different uh, fields uh, that they work in. Um, so it's it's nice to kind of meet these new people, like I said, especially ones that have, it's it's crazy how many have a, at least some type of tie-in with Polymaker. Um, just goes to show how much uh, that they're just out there. Obviously we all love them um, and there's just so much more out there that, that, that love them also. Um, but make sure also, if you do like Polymaker, if you do like this show, or if you like anything that Polymaker does, follow them on socials. We are Polymaker or Polymaker underscore 3D on all the socials, um, obviously, twitch.tv slash polymaker underscore 3D, if you're not watching there, or polymaker on YouTube. So we stream on both platforms. You're welcome to watch either way um, and you know chat on either chat. So a lot of you guys might be confused at times. You don't see something we're talking about. Um, it's it's in chat. It's just, it might be in the uh, the opposite uh, format. Um, but it looks like we have some first time chatters. Uh, I got Ron Sucho plus five. <laughs> I need to change my colors on here. And then also, uh, we got Meow Mitten. So welcome in, guys. Thanks for stopping to the show. Um, thanks for entering in. So you got your chance uh, to get in there. Um, other socials, uh, we always talk about every week. We have the uh, Polymaker figurines. Um, it's updated every two days with a new, out of the original 151 Pokemon, uh, a new uh, model and print release every two days. Um, and those models, models are available on Maker World. Um, you won't find it under Polymaker. It's going to be in choice dimensions underscore figurine. Um, and again, as he releases the video show, uh, showcasing the next character, that is when it becomes available on Maker World. There are colored files. You can print them solid or multicolor if you have a bamboo printer. Um, so also we do have our Hangouts. Um, our Hangouts are in Discord Monday through Friday, 9 p.m. Uh, every day. Saturday, Sunday, they're 3 p.m. But you can join anytime. There's people there throughout the day. Come in, say hi, introduce yourself, ask questions, or just join the zaniness that is the Hangout. Um, it's always fun. I'm often there. Uh, they're uh, taking in the free entertainment as, a, as first, in the first row. So uh, like I said, don't forget that. And also, uh, we have a Polymaker show um, done by Pezliz here on Twitch. Um, that is twitch.tv slash Pezliz. 
um, that is in printing color. Um, she does colors. She's done colors. Color swap uh, queen is what she was known as, is known as, I should say. I'm talking about new colors, new lineups um, every week. Um, that is every Wednesday on her uh, channel. Make sure to go follow her. Uh, learn about these cool new filaments and, and good use for them. I think uh, recently she did Starlight, one of my favorites. Um, so, again, very fun to watch. She's uh, amazing. If you see her at the Rep Rap Festivals, nice as can be. Don't be afraid to approach her. Say hi. Introduce yourself. Um, I'm sure she'll love it. So, um, with that said, let's get right into the drawing. So, here we go. Let's go ahead and draw the name. There it goes. Spin the wheel, spin the wheel, spin the wheel. And my screen's over there, so I'm looking away. <laughs> Who is going to be the winner? Oh, I... Silverback Creations. Silverback, uh, he's a regular in chat. He is a blast to talk to. Recently found out he's got a phenomenal singing voice. But congratulations, Silverback. Are you here in chat to claim that prize? There he is. There's Silverback. Congratulations. You want a spool of filament from none other than Polymaker. Um, we'll get that. Uh, if you want to um, share, I think, I don't know if we have the command yet. Um, James, do we have a command in chat to get the uh, contact information? Okay. Um, Silverback, uh, you can message uh, me or James. Uh, we can get that information to Sean, and we will get that voucher to you as soon as possible so you can start printing with it. I think you do some uh, vendor sales coming up here soon. Hopefully that helps you out some. Um, but with that said, this was, again, a Meet the Polymaker. Uh, we talked about a few things uh, throughout the day of different fashions, different designs and met yet another amazing creator. Uh, so thank you all again for coming. Don't forget to follow all the socials. Tune back in at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard next week uh, to catch us on yet another episode of Meet the Polymaker. Uh, we are going to go ahead and raid out to Zach M. Rutledge. So hang tight. You guys uh, go raid him. Give him a great hello. Give him a big old hug from Meet the Polymaker. Uh, show him your love and support. Um, as you do here, we always appreciate it. He will too. Um, so with that said, thanks again for coming. We'll see you next week.